We are delighted to introduce debate. Democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the rest. I'll hand over it to Sanjay now. Thank you. Wow! Look at this. Uh, can you all hear me? Incredible to see this hall. We can, We're really sorry that we've had to move into this particular space. It's the only one which had some light and it's supposed to be raining again heavily in the next half an hour. Uh, so we couldn't use the Mughal tent. Thank you all for being so extremely cooperative and taking in the spirit of the festival and being so wonderful through the day. Big hand to all of you. When uh, Namita coined uh, the debate topic this year and William, Namita and I discussed it, we were very aware that sometime this year is going to be India's next general elections. Over the last... Somebody wants to come in, somebody wants to go out. Sorry, because we are so full, I know people don't get to hear, but may I please? Namita, you, you really want luxury now. I thought this was first come, first seated. Fight your way through. When we first discussed, when we first discussed the issue, you know, we wondered what were the many realities that we face here in our country. And I'm going to start by giving you something that happened with me late last year when I was in Egypt. And I was in certain homes, we were, we'd set up a new festival in Egypt and we were in the homes of some very eminent uh, people who were rooting for democracy. They believed in democracy. And each time they talked about democracy, they kept telling me, there's a walkie-talkie somewhere here that needs to go off. Each time they talked about democracy, they kept saying to me, the only person who can ensure that we have democracy is the army. And we want the army. They're the most democratic of it all. It was an extremely puzzling statement. And a number of times I sort of suggested to some of our hosts that when you have army rule, it's quite different from being in a democratic situation but they didn't see the difference. More recently in India, in many drawing rooms, I've had roughly the same conversation, where a number of people feel that it's okay to mortgage democracy as we have it, as long as there is economic progress. We know that our forefathers have fought and given us an incredible gift, and that is of democracy and of freedom. The reason that all of us are assembled here today is because each of us can express ourselves in whatever way we wish to, because we live in a free and democratic country, however perfect or imperfect it may be. And that is what we're here to debate uh, today. I'm going to start by asking you all to raise your hands. A simple question. Are you in favor of democracy as opposed to anything else? I would say we have a fairly, fairly overwhelming, overwhelming vote in favor. We'll see if this changes in any way at the end. We have an incredible panel today. We were very conscious that we wanted to represent every kind of thought process and look at some of the emerging uh, uh, political equations in the country but as well as an idea of what democracy is and what it means to different people. I'm going to start by introducing uh, to my left uh, Indrajit Hazra, or Indi Hazra as he's known. He's a novelist and journalist living in New Delhi. Grand Delusions, a short biography of Kolkata was published in November 2013. It is his first book of nonfiction. He writes the popular column, Red Herring for Hindustan Times every Sunday. He's currently working on his fourth novel, Indrajit Hazra, commentator and journalist. <laughs> Peter Godwin, who's raised in Africa. He was a student at Cambridge. He was an award-winning foreign correspondent. By the way, nobody's supposed to photograph me with my glasses because I don't wear glasses. 
Uh, he's an author, documentary filmmaker, screenwriter. His latest book, Robert Mugabe uh, and Martyrdom of Zimbabwe, has been extremely well received, and we're very proud to have Peter here with us. Peter, welcome. <laughs> Anybody who's been to the Jaipur Literature Festival, even a year at any point of our seven years, knows uh, Pavan Varma. Uh, he is a festival's favorite, an incredible poet, a writer. <coughs> More recently, he's joined politics, and we wish him all the best. Uh, I keep telling him I hope he's going to be in some way India's culture minister, irrespective of which party comes to power. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Pavan Varma. One of the most incredible minds in Indian politics, Murli Manohar Joshi, I was speaking to. Joshi ji, I'm not sure whether that means you're winning the elections or not, but I think you're still very popular. I was speaking to Nivedita earlier today and she said, you know, in Delhi, we don't have a home. My father gifted me my first HMT watch when I was 27. But what I have and what my father has left me and his uh, grandchild is an incredible library. And he said, that's something that I cherish. The memory that I have for, of my father from when I was three or four was with, with him, always with a book. And we're very, very honored to have him here with us today, Murli Manohar Joshi Ji. <laughs> for those of you who've been following Indian politics, and especially recently over the last few days, uh, over the last few months, uh, all of you will be very familiar with Shazia Ilmi. Shazia, as all of you know, we obviously have a very keen, we have a very keen uh, 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 battle here. <laughs> Shazia, as you all know, started her career as an anchor with Doodarshan, which is where she actually, oh, sorry, with Star News, which is where she, uh, I'm still thinking of the 1970s and 80s, sorry, Star News, where she, where she really came to the fore. More recently, she joined the Aam Aadmi Party, where she's part of the general, uh, the national committee, and she's also been part of many advise, media advisory boards. And we're very delighted that in spite of this incredible uh, work that they have in front of them for the next few months, uh, she agreed to come out here today and be with us. Thank you, uh, Shazia. In our neighborhood, the most recent convert to democracy is Bhutan. They've done it in the most elegant and the most considered way. Lili Wangchuk is the president of a political party in Bhutan. Before joining politics, she was heading the Bhutan Media Foundation. She was recognized as one of the top 50 global women in 2013, Lili Wangchuk. K. Anis Ahmed is the author of Good Night, Mr. Kissinger. It's a collection of short stories. His short fiction has been nominated for the Pushcart Prize. He's the publisher of the Dhaka Tribune, a new national daily in Bangladesh. The World in My Hands is his first novel. As you all know, Bangladesh itself is going through its own turmoil in recent times. They've just had an election, which has been a very difficult time for them. They too are trying to re reinvent their version of democracy. So ladies and gentlemen, our panel for today. I'm not necessarily going to go in any particular order and calling my colleagues to, uh, to debate. The way this is going to work is each of them are going to have the first few minutes to put across their point of view. Uh, Nathulal Solanki was the last of a group of Wonderful Nagara players will sound the will sound the bell as usual as he does. Yeah. 
once everybody finishes speaking, we'll open it to questions of the, to the House. My only request when we open it to uh, the House is keep your questions short. The questions from the House should not necessarily be with the political agenda. Please ask the question of, about the debate and of our many colleagues here so that it's fair and forthright and frank and it's about an exchange of ideas. This is not necessarily an election rally. It's not necessarily about scoring election points. Uh, we will then return to our colleagues and ask them to round up their statements and then I'll come back to you and ask you for a vote after which we will conclude the festival with some great music. So ladies and gentlemen, the debate to topic for today, democracy is the worst form of government except for all the rest. Can I invite to start Indrajit Hasdra and then I'll ask Anish to follow. Thank you, Shanjay. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, as a teenager in the 1980s, I wanted India to be ruled by Japan. <laughs> it's true. Um, we're on a five-year contract. <laughs> if they could make great cars and video games and, you know, um, Walkman, they would be, I reckon, uh, able to inject some sense in this semi-anarchic, fully feudal India that I lived in without us needing a Sanjay Gandhi. Essentially, I wanted India to be a temporary Japanese client state. Um, Post-war Japan not being a threat as a hegemonic superpower. It was a crap idea, uh, n now that I think of it, for many reasons. One of them being encouraging perpetual dependency. The subject of today's variable conversation, uh, sorry, debate, is democracy is the worst form of government except for all the rest. Let me put that in its original context a bit. Um, many forms of government have been tried and will be tried in this world of sin and woe. No one pretends that democracy is perfect or all wise. Indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government except all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. That's Winston Churchill made that observation in a House of Commons speech in nine, uh, November 1947, three months after India stopped being a colonial state, and more importantly, more than two years after he was elected out of prime ministership in 1945. He would come back to power as the British prime minister in 1951. In India, we have tried two notable non-democratic forms of government in the last 250 odd years. The second one lasting 18 months in the mid-1970s. And despite how much we forget or choose to forget that colonial capitalism was predatory, benign predatory at its best and destructive predatory at, it, at its default position, it was far worse for most Indians lying outside the comparable classes, whether they knew it or not, than a nobled democracy. And, if, and even if some nostalgia hunters may sigh loudly about trains having come in on time for 18 months, any form of government whose main virtue is getting train schedules right while cutting off fundamental freedom in many of its forms, is essentially making its case by trashing bad timekeeping rather than anything it has to offer beyond window store show, show. Now, democracy is not a perfect spouse. I don't have one. So, uh, <laughs> no, Willie. <yeah. laughs> and you realize quite quickly, if you decide to realize it, that you, the cog in the, in the democracy wheel, aren't perfect either. If people who have personally experienced the shortcomings of both democratic 
and undemocratic regimes, opt in favor of the former, that's democratic regimes, then the Churchill hypothesis stands. If on the other hand, those people prefer the undemocratic alternatives, it wasn't, oh, yeah. <laughs> to the imperfections of democracy, then the Churchill hypothesis is false. I did have Rajma in the afternoon, though. So, 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 so. Democracy, it turns out, from various examples that we've had, does not fall short of even the lesser evils yardstick. <laughs> Thank you. you very much indeed. <laughs> Can I please invite Ki Anis Ahmad? I'm so glad I've had a chance to get used to that sound. I'm from Bangladesh, which uh, has been a democracy since 1991. We had elections on January 5th, and the elections were very difficult. The opposition boycotted it, which led to 153 people being uh, elected uncontested, and there was tremendous violence in the year leading up to the polls, uh, with uh, an estimated 550 people dead. So democracy can be an extremely conflictual uh, form of governance, uh, especially when it's still in a formative stage. And yet, coming from that perspective, I am unapologetically, unabashedly, all the way for democracy. And I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you a very quick anecdote. In 1987, when we were still under dictatorship on a political program, which were then increasing, pro-democracy movement, one day this young man came out at zero point uh, of center in Dhaka with a remarkable inscription on his chest which said, death to dictatorship, and on his back, also in white paint, free democracy. The police shot him. He was killed. The center has been renamed Nur Hussain Square. The day is still commemorated. He is one of our most cherished icons of democracy. Democracy is a system for which people give their lives. I have known other systems in history which have taken lives by the millions, but people don't give their life for it. There is there is, there is a reason why people do that, because democracy, more than any other system, not only gives you a chance at having a say and having a fair enough governance system, but also ensuring human dignity by ensuring basic rights like speech, association, habeas corpus, and so on. People will argue for expediency. They will say, look at Chinese growth. First of all, Chinese growth, with due respect, is overstated. They're barely in the top 100 uh, in terms of per capita income in purchasing power parity, and their uh, least developed provinces rank with uh, in the 120s or 30s of the UN index. Would you really give up the pride and privilege of being the world's largest democracy for one or two percent more growth per year? <laughs> India is fabulous in its totally fractious, rambunctious democracy, but you also have phenomenon like the Aam Admi Party and other things coming up, challenging the status quo. The Aam Admi Party, no doubt, will also get its challenges in due course. That's the beauty of democracy. <clears throat> Another thing is, you know, here we are gathered debating, is democracy any good? With, again, due respect, I wonder if we could be at a literary festival in Beijing right now debating whether one party system is any good. I have often felt that people who have democracy are the ones who can be most cavalier about it. Those who don't have it will like, will, will like that solitary, unforgettable man in Tiananmen Square stand silently in front of a tank. They will set themselves on fire like Bouazizi in Tunisia. People who don't have democracy will give their lives for it. Those of us who have it should guard it with our life. Thank you. Can I please ask Lily Wangchuk to come up? Yes. If you can, if you want to sit there, otherwise you can come up. Yeah. 
Good evening. It's a great honor for me to be here today amongst the distinguished panel from India and beyond. And I would like to thank uh, Namita, William, Sanjoy, and the organizers for this invitation to participate in the Literary Festival and to share our Bhutanese perspective on democracy. Um, as every other Bhutanese, uh, I'm a proud beneficiary of democracy that was gifted to us by our king, uh, His Majesty Jigme Singh Wangchuk in 2008. The story of origin of democracy in Bhutan is a unique one, uh, where unlike uh, many other countries where democracy had been introduced with long years of struggle, bloodshed through external and internal pressure, the origin of democracy in Bhutan has been introduced by none other than our king, who who at the peak of his reign uh, introduced democracy in the best interest of the country, who felt that no person in the country, not even the king of Bhutan should be indispensable and power to govern should be in the hands of the people. And as a result, <laughs> as a result, democracy was introduced in 2008 uh, against much reluctance from our citizens because as Bhutanese over uh, 100 years being under the monarchy, we felt there was no need for change. During 100 years of uh, rule under monarchy, Bhutan had witnessed unprecedented development and change, progress, peace, and stability. We had nothing to complain about. And uh, we were quite content with the system of governance we had. So we did not want change, and there was a lot of resistance from the people from all quarters of the sections of the society, but much against our will, democracy was forced upon us in 2008. <laughs> uh, today, uh, we consider democracy our sacred gift, our sacred responsibility. Therefore, uh, we engage in active uh, participation in democracy, either through voter turnout or with formation of political parties or by playing an, uh, a very active role in decision making. Democracy is therefore here to stay. But having said that, over the last five years of uh, the democratic uh, experience that we've had, we've also seen a lot of ills associated with democracy. Uh, such as uh, we've had, especially in the elections, we've seen a lot of negative campaign, a lot of mudslinging, where society has got broken along ideology, along party lines, uh, which has affected the social fabric within the fa smaller families, with societies. And we've seen a lot of that, but we believe uh, this is only a passing phase, and uh, uh, this is something that we things will change with time. Uh, even with all the challenges associated with democracy, we believe that democracy is the most best form of government, uh, especially in keeping with the current uh, uh, changing environment, because it gives power to the people. It gives equality to the people. It gives opportunity to the people to elect your leaders, your government, which can be held responsible for their commitment and for, for their actions. So we believe democracy is, uh, is I think, uh, for Bhutan, uh, we believe it's a sacred uh, gift for us from the throne. And uh, there is no system that is perfect. I think uh, no democratic system or no political system that's perfect, but I think it's individuals, it's leaders that make a difference. In the earlier system, even though we had a monarchy system, we've had a selfless leader who've made valuable difference to the country. Even in the current system, we believe that it's the leaders that can either make it better or worse. So it's the leader that can either break or ensure the success of democracy. And uh, I would stress upon the importance of leaders that you choose uh, uh, and uh, how leaders can make a difference, and it's the leaders that can make a difference. <laughs> Peter Godwin.
Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to do my very best to avoid death by drumming. Um, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this fairly short. Um, I have been a foreign and war correspondent for 20 or 30 years, I suppose. And in that time, it's been my enormous privilege to have had a front row seat on two extraordinary stories, stories that in a sense are the kind of major moral tectonic shifts of my generation. And those two stories were the lowering of the Berlin Wall, the end of the end of Soviet Union, Soviet Empire, and the end of apartheid in South Africa. These were two astonishing stories. What's, what's so interesting about both these stories is that they are stories, uh, and, and they are possibly the best, uh, best arguments for in favor of democracy that I've ever seen. And they're counterintuitive in so far as the best argument for democracy is what happens when there is a lack of democracy. That basically, in the short term, it's often quite tempting to want uh, to want something that looks more structured and more disciplined. Let's face it, democracy is often ugly, it's loud, it's noisy, and it's rude. But over the course of time, it's the one way that you can manage a society is by allowing it to express itself. It's also the best way of managing a transition. I grew up in Africa, I was born into colonial Africa in what was then Rhodesia, and had a transition to Zimbabwe, and I've covered a lot, of, a lot of the early African transitions. And what's so interesting, what's so interesting there is that in the first generation of post-colonial leadership in Africa, we often had people declaring themselves, leaders declaring themselves to be president for life. Now, of course, there's one problem with declaring yourself president for life, and that's if someone wants to get you out of power, they probably have to end it. So these, these, these various systems that don't have a democratic part built into them uh, usually are completely unable to manage transition. But this brings me next to, my, to my next point. Because democracy is, I think, the easiest thing to morally defend, and I would just as an asterisk say that you often see democracy um, uh, attacked by those who don't practice it, as a Western export, as something that in the past Western countries have said, you've all got to be democratic, this is something that they enforce on the rest of the world, and that it's, that it's culturally ethnocentric. And although it may have come down from, the, from classical Greece and one thing, I think that that's not true in so far as empowering any society to decide what it wants for itself can never be imposing on it, imposed on it from outside. So my point is that there are a lot of things that look like democracy. There are a lot of countries which claim to be democratic, but they're actually pseudo-democracies. You need a bunch of other things in place to make a democracy real. For example, um, you, need, you need proper courts, you need proper, you need non-corrupt elections. It was, I think, Stalin who famously said, it's not just who votes that counts, it's who counts the votes. Um, and of course, of course in the Soviet Union he did, at least while he was in power. Um, okay, I'm, damn it, um, uh, I missed it. Um, well, let me just end, end with one, one, one observation also, is that which, which I think has been um, mentioned before, I love the, uh, I think it was, um, we think it's the movie Crimson Tide where, where Denzel Washington, who's the, um, the submariner, he's the vice captain, turns around to the captain and was the other way around and says, we're not here to practice democracy, we're here to defend it. Um, I think that the, the, the important... Okay, I failed. Shazia Ilmi. Thank you so much. 
This quote of Churchill is probably uh, one of the few ones that I agree to, considering what a racist bigot Churchill was. But I want to talk, go further, and quote Tennyson here, Lord Alfred Tennyson, and I don't like the Lord in it at all. The old order changeth, yielding place to new, and God fulfills himself in many ways, lest one good custom should corrupt the world. The good custom that we are talking about is democracy. Democracy unrealized, democracy unfulfilled, a democracy that is not real becomes a travesty of democracy in, in years to come. We in India have a representative democracy, which means that we elect our representatives. But how democratic is our democracy is the question. We feel that when one third of the Indian parliament faces serious charges of corruption and criminal charges against them, when one third of Indian parliament has princelings, people who are there because of uh, feudal dynastic laws of succession, there is always going to be a conflict of interest vis-a-vis -vis what people want and how the legislators think. We think that our government is only the government and the government is not the government. हमें हमें राजनीति से I'm sorry about this but I think I would I would like to speak both in English and Hindi if it's okay with you जरूर हमें हमें लगता है कि राजनीति से राज को हटाकर नीति लानी पड़ेगी और वो नीति लोक नीति होगी जब तक हमारे चुने हुए प्रतिनिधि या नुमाइंदे जो हम भेजते हैं पार्लियामेंट में या विधानसभा में जो वो हमारे हित के लिए काम नहीं करेंगे हमसे पूछ के नीति नहीं बनाएंगे ये सच्ची डेमोक्रेसी नहीं होगी इसलिए हमें लगता है कि बहुत जरूरी है कि हम लोगों के बीच में जाएं देयर इज अ ह्यूज डिस्कनेक्ट बिटवीन द पॉलिटिकल क्लास एंड पीपल ऑफ दिस कंट्री एंड इन अ कंट्री दिस इज अ लार्जेस्ट डेमोक्रेसी इफ टू थिंक ऑफ इट इफ हाफ ऑफ इंडिया डज नॉट हैव एक्सेस टू पोर्टेबल ड्रिंकिंग वाटर एक्सेस टू क्लीन टॉयलेट्स Believe me, we have a long, long way to go. Which is why it's important to come back to democracy and the question of democracy and to make it from representative democracy to participatory democracy. Kya hamara kaam se vote dena hai? Paas saal mein ek citizen ka kaam. Kya sir vote dena hai? Paas saal intazar karna hai? Aur phir dekhna hai ki parliamentarians kya kar rahe hai? Ya hamara kaam hai bhaagi daari, stakeholder banna. बार बार अपने चुने हुए प्रतिनिधि को रिमाइंड कराना कि आपकी नीति हमारे खिलाफ है ये काम हमें करना पड़ेगा एक इनरेज सिटीजन से हमें एंगेज सिटीजन बनना पड़ेगा बार बार रिमाइंड कराना पड़ेगा कि हम हैं मालिक हम हैं मालिक और आप हैं सेवक हमें अलग अलग चीजें कहा गया है समरी स्कॉल्डर्स रेबल राउजर्स एनकिस्ट इफ अ लॉ इज यूज टू प्रोमोट लॉलेसनेस to break down law and order, should we follow that law or seek changes to that law? Aren't social, aren't social protests part of democracy? Just like casting a vote and use of adult franchise, the power of ballot is an important tool of democracy. So protests against an unfair system is equally a part of democracy. We stand by that and we will do that. And the right to protest is everybody's including a chief minister who has a problem with the way things are in this country. You know, we, we, we were very, <laughs> well, you see this cap that I'm wearing, it talks about Swaraj, self-rule. As Tilak said, Swaraj is my birthright. स्वराज हमारा जनतन अधिकार है और हम उसे लेके रहेंगे अपनी डेमोक्रेसी को हम डीपन करेंगे मेहनत करेंगे सेलिब्रेट करेंगे और उसे फाइन ट्यून करते रहेंगे जब तक वो डेमोक्रेसी वाकई में डेमोक्रेटिक नहीं हो सबके लिए जय हिंद थैंक यू पवन वर्मा I think the fundamental principle is uncontested that we all have raised our hands in favor of democracy. 
That was a gift that came to us in our constitution and it has done us proud. We got universal suffrage at a time when even in the developed countries, there were some countries which had not given them to women. India in 1950 gave it to women. But today I ask you, आज मैं आपके सामने एक दूसरा प्रश्न रखना चाहता हूं कि डेमोक्रेसी के हम सब हकदार हैं हम सब उसके हिमायती हैं हम सब उसके साथ हैं उसकी रक्षा करने के लिए कितने लोग तैयार हैं आई आस दिस क्वेश्चन स्पेशली टू द मिडिल क्लास इट्स अ रेलिवेंट क्वेश्चन फॉर यू एंड आई टुडे बिकॉज वी बिगिन टू टेक डेमोक्रेसी फॉर ग्रांटेड and democracy is one instrument which can through its processes allow democracy to be hijacked in 1975 put a mirror before you in 1975 when emergency was declared there was an andolan on emergency was declared the first class of people by and large who capitulated to the emergency were people from the middle class they said trains are running as it was pointed out buses are running on time and they continued to support it until one of their own members while tra accused of traveling ticketless on a bus was caught and castrated under some family planning program which was arbitrarily imposed <laughs> then they realized then they realized that there is a correlation between issues that if you chip away against democracy at one level its consequences are felt at another level and so therefore the question before us if we all wish to preserve democracy are we willing to fight to preserve it i want to say to you hamare sath kabhi kabhi mujhe ek line share ki yaad aa rahi hai hum unki yaad mein aksar unhi ko bhul gaye aur is cheez ka khauf mujhe bada khauf hai is drum ka is is mujhe इस चीज का खौफ कभी कभी आज के राजनीतिक परिप्रेक्ष्य में दिखता है क्योंकि आपसे मैं एक बात शेयर करना चाहता हूं कि जो अनडेमोक्रेटिक फोर्सेस होती हैं वो डेमोक्रेसी के ही जरिए से बढ़ती हैं प्लीज ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड इट्स अ कॉम्प्लेक्स इश्यू इट्स बिफोर यू एंड आई वी आर गोइंग टू बी पार्टिसिपेंट्स इन इट द चैलेंज इज बिफोर एस हिटलर केम टू पावर थ्रू अ डेमोक्रेटिक इलेक्शन and by the way his greatest supporters and i say this to you because we are all participants this audience is a participant his greatest supporter was the middle class in germany he said forget every other issue there are only two issues before the nation economic growth and nationalism don't consider anything else with these two everything else will be satisfied and an entire nation was hijacked at that time and and thrown through the process of democracy the question of a dictatorship of the kind that hitler had so i say to you yes we are for democracy but never get slightly hijacked or seduced by the argument ki zara sa democracy ko frill kar dein kuch din danda raj le aaye ek dictator ko thode din hum sanctify kar dein और फिर देखिए डेमोक्रेसी बाद में और पनपेगी ऐसा नहीं होता है यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इट हमारी कई हमारी कभी कभी यह फितरत होती है कि हम कहते हैं अब तो घबरा के ये कहते हैं कि मर जाएंगे मर के भी ना मिला चैन तो किधर जाएंगे तो तो मैं आपसे आखिरी में यह कहता हूं एक पुरानी फिल्म का दो लाइन है तुम अगर मुझको न चाहो तो कोई बात नहीं तुम किसी और को चाहोगी तो मुश्किल होगी लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन मुरली मुनीस कोई जिंदाबाद नहीं कोई मुर्दाबाद नहीं सिर्फ डेमोक्रेसी जिंदाबाद
बहनों और भाइयों मैं उन आदमियों में से हूं जो ये कहता हूं कि हर खामी के बावजूद मैं डेमोक्रेसी को पसंद करता हूं विद ऑल इट्स डिफेक्ट्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नेंस आई लव रेस्पेक्ट एंड वर्क एंड फाइट फॉर डेमोक्रेसी और जब मैं कहता हूं कि आई फाइट फॉर डेमोक्रेसी तो इसलिए कहता हूं कि जब डेमोक्रेसी पर हमला हुआ था जिसकी तरफ आपने बात कही थी तो उस वक्त उसके पहले हमले के पहली के ये दस्तक पर सवेरे छह बजे हमें उठा के जेल में भेज दिया गया और हम लड़ते रहे जिस डेमोक्रेसी को के रास्ते से डेमोक्रेसी पे हमला हुआ था ये डेमोक्रेसी की ही ताकत थी कि हमने उसको फिर से रेस्टोर करने का पूरा प्रयास किया और रेस्टोर कर दिया कई बार हम जो फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट है उससे डेमोक्रेसी का कंफ्यूजन पैदा करते हैं डेमोक्रेसी एक स्पिरिट है डेमोक्रेसी एक हमारे और आपके सोच का तरीका है इसमें हम हर विचार को हर आइडिया को समझने की कोशिश करते हैं टॉलरेट करने की कोशिश करते हैं और असलियत डेमोक्रेसी का मतलब है कि जहां हम डिफरेंसेस को डाइवर्सिटी को सेलिब्रेट करते हैं डेमोक्रेसी सेलिब्रेशन देती है और ये कई बार कहा जाता है कि डेमोक्रेसी पश्चिम से आई ठीक है कहीं इंग्लैंड को डेमोक्रेसी का की मां कहा जाता है नए जमाने की डेमोक्रेसी की मां वो जरूर है लेकिन असली डेमोक्रेसी की मां हिंदुस्तान है हमारे यहां बहुत पहले से सभा और समिति का उल्लेख वेद में है इलेक्शन है वोटिंग है बैलेट पेपर के बजाय बैलेट स्टिक्स है मगर है और सबसे बड़ी बात यह है कि उसमें एक सवाल उठाया गया कि दुनिया कहां से आई तो बताते बताते आखिर में वो कहता है कि ये कहां से आया ये तो मुझे पता नहीं शायद बनाने वाले को पता हो मगर आखिर में कहता है मैं नहीं जानता कि उसको भी पता हो या नहीं पता हो ये जो डाउट है ये जो जो शक है ये जो सवाल करने की एक प्रवृत्ति है जो उसके लिए इजाजत है द फैक्ट दैट यू आर अलाउड टू क्वेश्चन ये डेमोक्रेसी की सबसे बड़ी ताकत है और जब भी कोई सरकार कोई फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट में डेमोक्रेसी में खराबी आती है तो इसीलिए आती है कि सरकारें जो डेमोक्रेसी के नाम पे बनती हैं वो क्वेश्चंस का जवाब देने में घबराती हैं मैं इतफाक से उस कमेटी का चेयरमैन हूं जिसे रोज सरकार से जवाब तलब करना पड़ता है और मैंने देखा है कि किस तरह सरकारें अभी तो एक ही को देखा है उसके किस तरह से उसके मंत्री उसके उसके सचिव उसके कारिंदे आते हैं घबराते हैं और जवाबदेही से कतराते हैं डेमोक्रेसी की सबसे बड़ी पहचान जवाबदेही है अगर कोई सिस्टम जवाबदेह है तो वो डेमोक्रेटिक है अगर जवाब देने से घबराता है तो वो अनडेमोक्रेटिक है इसलिए ये जवाबदेही की चीज हमें पैदा करनी चाहिए और इन्होंने सवाल पैदा कर दिया और मेरा जवाब है कि डेमोक्रेसी अपनी तमाम खामियों के बाद हमारी सबसे पहली पसंद है और एक स्पिरिट के तौर पर एक भावना के तौर पर ये हमेशा रहेगी क्योंकि यही वो भावना है जो मनुष्य को मानसिक और आजादी की इजाजत देती है इट इज द सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ द इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ ह्यूमन माइंड What what I'm going to do now is ask Hitesh and his colleagues to um, keep their mics ready. I don't know whether yeah, and I'm going to take without any shouting and screaming. I'll take some questions. So let's take some questions from this side. So the girl in the in the white uh, T-shirt, and then the gentleman in the cap there. If you both stand up, and the mics will come to you. Keep your questions short. and uh, if you need to address it to any one particular person please do most importantly just introduce yourself hello okay i my name is leon and um, 
democracy is essentially about what the people want, right? About, um, well, the majority. So my question is, what happens when the majority votes against a democracy? What if they don't want the democracy? I mean, it's, it's for the sake of... Fine, so what happens if somebody votes not to have a democracy? This is the question. Let's hold that. The gentleman in the hat. There, there's, there's, a, there's a mic coming to you. It's a little bit unpopular. If democracy is the best form of government, how in the world all the pioneers of democracy in the world, like United States and European countries, they end up supporting dictatorial regimes elsewhere? So why do... Democratic regimes in the world support dictators in other places. Uh, let me take a few questions from this side. The lady in the blue, uh, if you could stand up, ma'am. And then the, uh, the lady with the cap. Yeah. I'm Krishna. Whenever we talk of democracy, it is only about the parliament. While democracy also means panchayats. That is where democracy should really start. And the lady within the cap? Uh, my question is for Santri Saab, Mundi Manohar Joshi. Um, you said that democracy, you have to be, on, when you can be answerable, that is democracy. But when you can question as well, that is also democracy. And my question to you is that when one of the other central tenets of democracy is you have to be answerable to law the rule of law and the law of the land. But what happens when that law itself is faulty? Thank you. So let's start with that. Joshi ji, wahi se bhi. Wahi se hi. It is democracy which permits you to change the law so that the law enforces democracy and does not become undemocratic. There are laws which are undemocratic, and so they have to be changed. But it's only through democracy you can change them, and it gives you the power to change. Just you, Pavan had gave you example that emergency was imposed. That was a draconian law, an undemocratic law, but that was changed through democratic process. So the democracy changes it. The accountability at different levels has to be addressed. There is an accountability before the parliament. There is an accountability before the people. So it depends upon what sort of undemocratic law is there. If it was only confined to parliament, it can be <laughs> answered in parliament and rectified there. But if it is beyond parliament, then elections are the way out and you change this whole system, the whole government, the whole apparatus. Shadia, you wanted to add. When uh, the party high command of all the parties feel the same way, and when there is a popular movement wanting a law which, is in con which has a direct conflict of interest with the parties, so to speak, which is when street protests and pressure from the people makes a difference and takes the fight further for the legislators to take interest and pass the law which is in their favor. Pavan? Today, in our context, Public pressure changes bad laws. Understand this. Because those who are often in the system, Udli Manoshi Yoshiji will excuse me for saying this. And I excuse, no, of course, I agree with you. I feel that there are too many vested interests in the establishment continuing as it is. Ultimately, they will change when public pressure comes because there is only one thing the political class is really sensitive to whether they will win the next election or not. Does anybody want to answer the thing? Murli Manoj Joshika. In 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 do na in kalagado. Shadia, keep your keep your this thing on. Uh, anybody wants to answer the question why uh, some democracies support dictatorships? as was brought up. Peter, do you want to take that? Inka Mike. Uh, 
is it on? Yeah, the, in the context of Africa, for example, uh, you had for many years to, um, you know, it, the West's enormous, um, I think, subsequent embarrassment when the Cold War was at its height, all that Moscow and Washington cared about when they looked at Africa was whether uh, an African state supported Moscow or Washington. So the West was happy to support lots of dictators in Africa like Mobutu in Zaire and that kind of thing. All we cared about was were they anti-communist or, or pro-Western. So in, in, the con in the geopolitics of the time, you're absolutely right, that does often happen. And the subsequent question about, about um, what do you do when a nation self-evidently doesn't want democracy. And we've had examples of that. Um, in Algeria, for example, when <coughs> the Algerian government was, was pressured to have elections and a party that, that went, had the election campaign saying, vote for us and it'll be the last vote you ever have, and they looked like they were going to win, and the army basically took back over. And as you were referring to earlier, in Egypt, for example, we've got a very messy situation where in the recent referendum, which only, I think, 38% of people voted, but the result was 98% in favor. So I do think that... Pe People have to want a democracy. They have to earn a democracy. And when they get it, they have to be prepared to defend it. Any of you want to answer any of the other questions at all? Anis, anybody? Okay. Uh, let's take some questions from the back of the room. So, um, thank you. Either you all come up or I conduct the thing. So, back of the room, the gentleman with the blue... A sleeve, can you stand up? And uh, the gentleman with a red T-shirt with glasses, yes? You stand up. And back of the room means back of the room. This doesn't translate as back of the room. I'll come back to you. Uh, and there's a girl who's half standing up. Yes, ma'am, you. So can we get these three questions? My question is primarily for Shazia. Uh, the question is that uh, uh, if we move towards direct democracy, then don't you think that uh, uh, we will also have to accommodate the regressive mindset of people? I'll give you one very small example. Had there been a referendum, Sati Pratha would have never been eliminated from India. What is your opinion on that? Thank you. So what is your opinion about bringing about? But, but Shazia, just hold, hold, the, hold the answer till we come back. The lady. Hello. My question is, What's the difference between a democracy that's received as a gift and one that is fought for with your very lifeblood? Say that again. A democracy that is received as a gift and one that is fought for with your lifeblood. So like in Bhutan where it's received as a gift and one that in India where we fought for it. What is the difference between that and the third, uh, the gentleman in the red t-shirt? Sir, my question is in with line with the gentleman there. Uh, I would rather ask it directly. How is participatory democracy, uh, democracy different from Khap Panchayats? Uh, participatory democracy, how is it different from Khap Panchayats? Khap Panchayats se kya alag hai? Shazia, do you want to? Aapne bahut se logo ne Khap Panchayat ki baat ki, kisi ne Sati Pratha ki baat ki. Referendum ki jab hum baat karte hai, to hum jo bhi baat puchte hai, wo constitution ke daire mein hai. हमारे देश में महिलाओं के लिए बराबर से हक हक हैं और कोई भी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन रिलिजियस रिलिजन के आधार पर या लिंग के आधार पर या जाति के आधार पर अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल है तो अगर बहुत से लोग हिंदू राष्ट्र चाहते हैं या सती प्रथा चाहते हैं तो वो अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल डिमांड है उस पर रेफरेंडम हो ही नहीं सकता हम उसके आइन के जो के दायरे में ही बात कर रहे हैं कि लोग क्या चाहते हैं अपने लैंड के लिए यूटिलिटीज के लिए पैसे के लिए कैसे एलोकेशन ऑफ फंड्स है कैसे रिसोर्स एलोकेशन है जो पब्लिक यूटिलिटीज है जो पब्लिक हेल्थ है जो एजुकेशन है उसमें लोगों की जवाबदेही हमारे रिप्रेजेंटेटिव की जवाबदेही चाहिए हम बिल्कुल खाप पंचायत और सती प्रथा के खिलाफ हैं क्योंकि हमारा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इसकी आजादी नहीं देता थैंक यू एनी बडी एल्स वॉन्ट Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, I think the difference between uh, the piece, uh, one that has been gifted and fought for is, 
I think one that has been gifted would allow a peaceful transition, a gradual process towards democracy. In the context of Bhutan, uh, we've, we had prepared ourselves for democracy right from the 80s when, we, when there was a lot of uh, devolution of power from the throne to the uh, grassroots level. We began with the uh, block development committees, then, then it was uh, transferred to district development committees. So it was, and then it also gave us enough time to set up uh, the relevant institutions in place so that uh, would ensure the uh, strengthening uh, of uh, democracy. So it allowed a gradual and peaceful transition to democracy. And I think uh, having it as a gift would allow us to have this peaceful transition. And also the fact that uh, we consider it a gift, we've also taken it as a very serious responsibility of making democracy work with very active participation of people in the political process. Thank you. I'm going to take some questions from the front again. So this young lad is one. Uh, Saurabh, uh, uh, there is the second one. And yours is the third one. May I be aapke paas aata You need a mic. Hold on. One of the questions that hasn't been answered that was asked is uh, um, about what happens if somebody votes against wanting a democracy. We haven't answered that question yet. Somebody? It's supposing a people does not want a democracy and they vote against having a democracy. If any of you, so, uh, okay, sorry. Peter, Peter answered it partially. My question is all of you, to all of you, that what is the basic need for democracy in India? Thanks. What's the basic need for democracy in India? Hitesh there. And then Saurabh in front and then we'll come back to... Sarkar chunao karati hai aur hum vote dalne jate hai. Hai? Lekin jo democracy ke andar chun ke aate hai, un partiyo se mein suchna ke adhikar ke ter, suchna maangne ka adhikar nahi hai. Kyo? I am associated with RTI Association of India. Second, our constitution is excellent. In our constitution, three tier system in our constitution. So, what is the question? Question is that, sir, RTI ke tayat hum democracy democracy ki jo partiyan ki jo candidate aata hai, usse hume suchna lene ka adhikar nahi hai democracy party se. Why? So, we need the we right need, to yeah, get yeah. information. Saurabh Kothari from. No, no, here, this side. And one more here. My, my regards to the esteemed panel. My regards to the esteemed panel. My name is Saurabh Kuthari. My question is, instead of being complacent with the fact that democracy is a lesser evil, is it not time that we should devise ways to educate people in responsible citizenship, number one? That part is for Muli Manohar Joshi, sir, if you could please, sir. And the second part is for Shazia ji, uh, that being, uh, is it not time uh, that we should also strive to make participation more meaningful and constructive? Both meaningful and constructive. Thank you so much. And, and one last question here. In practice, is it not a notion, the democracy which I'm uh, trying to say, Hardly 28 to 30 percent people vote 200 representatives, send them to the parliament. And as Pavanji mentioned, a political class. They are a class in itself. Are they representing the needs of the people? Or are they taking their own decision, those 200 individuals, which we see mostly in practice? Thank you. So are they taking, so are they taking the needs of the people into consideration? There was a question on RTI, Saurabh's question. Who wants to take it first? Yoshi ji. Mike. The question was ki, there must be an awareness about responsible citizenship. Perhaps that, yes, that is there and it is the duty of the political parties to also interact with the people and discuss the responsibilities and also tell them what is the constitutional provision also in this. There are fundamental duties also in the constitution. So we have to give a, a, a very deep thought to it, say through education. The citizenship's ideas, they also are to be inculcated through education. Shiksha se ye sabse zyada cheez aati hai. 
दूसरा जो आचरण होता है बिहेवियर होता है अगर कोई मिनिस्टर दस साल तक बीस साल तक इनकम टैक्स जमा न करे तो वो रिस्पॉन्सिबल और रिस्पॉन्सिव सिटीजनशिप नहीं बता सकता तो जो आइकन्स हैं जो लीडर्स हैं उनका आचरण कैसा है और जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल ऑब्लिगेशनस हैं उनको हम किस तरह से लोगों को समझाते हैं इसका होना बहुत ज़रूरी है अगर ये नहीं होगा तो सिटीजनशिप की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं आएगी छोटी छोटी बातें होती हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप कहीं दुनिया में जाइए तो कूड़े कूड़ा लोग सड़क पर नहीं डालेंगे यहाँ डाल देते हैं सड़क सिगरेट जलती हुई फेंक देते हैं तो ये जो बिल्कुल एलिमेंट्री चीज़ें हैं ये छूट छुटपने से एजुकेशन से आती हैं उसी से फिर लॉ के अबाइडिंग के बारे में ये आता है टैक्स टाइम पे जमा करना है अगर मैं नहीं जमा करूँगा तो मैं अपनी कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसी में लोगों से टैक्स नहीं मांग कर जमा कर सकूँगा तो दोनों बातें होती हैं नीचे से और ऊपर से लेकिन ऊपर से करने पर लोगों के सामने ज़्यादा प्रभाव होता है कि दिखता है कि भाई ये ये लोग ऐसा कर रहे हैं और नीचे से करने से धीरे धीरे वो आदतें बनती हैं तो ये किया जा सकता है शाजिया आई फील देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन लिटरेसी एंड एजुकेशन एंड आई थिंक दट द रोल ऑफ ऑल पार्टीज टू टॉक अबाउट पोलिटिकल एजुकेशन विच इज आई थिंक इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट टू टॉक अबाउट आइडेंटिटी पॉलिटिक्स वोट बैंक पॉलिटिक्स एज लॉन्ग एज वी कंटिन्यू टू वोट ऑन बेसिस ऑफ रिलीजन कास्ट एंड प्रमोट इट I I am afraid it will never be uh, a truly representative or a true democracy. I think we must see create a civ civil identity, citizens identity and actually all parties must work on uh, improving and working on this political education and doing uh, having some kind of legislative reforms to prevent criminals and uh, prince uh, the feudal uh, lords and princelings to enter the parliament and also to promote uh, the uh, meritocracy Uh, and uh, uh, defeat some kind of kleptocracy that seems to masquerade in our country in form of democracy does anybody want to answer the question about rti about the demand that rti uh, is used for all political people that was his question joshi ji pavan shazia anybody wants to answer that question about rti that rti i i believe i believe that the lack of financial transparency in political parties is a great weakness of our democracy right? first first th th these are proposals of the election commission and kotari ji there is a law which needs to be repealed which allows political parties to get donations under 20000 rupees without naming the donor yes. all checks come for 19999 not checks cash the coupon system this has to go second the election commission has recommended that political parties accounts should be audited by a panel of auditors nominated by the cag and the ec that should be done third those audited accounts should be put on a website for public viewing fourthly i believe that not not everything in a political party needs to come under rti but certainly their financial accounts should come under rti this is a personal view joshi ji i i have been always pleading it that if a political party or a group of persons working in politics cannot keep a correct account of the donations collected how can they keep the state accounts and state money in proper shape that is the basic question which i have been raising if your own finances are <laughs> under shadowy then certainly the state coffers will also be misused wrongly used yeah. and therefore the principle is simple that financial accountability at all levels whether it is in the political party or whether it is in the government has to be done and secondly another aspect is which the election commission has been saying and there is a debate about it that whether the internal democracy of the political parties has to be uh, um, uh, conducted by a, a, a body an external body, body. External an external body. body but that is a debatable question and it needs a very serious thought about it so wo to abhi nahi par jahan tak finances ka sawal hai One second. There's one more answer coming from here. Hold on. I just want to add to what Mr. Manohar Joshi 
said, the lack of inner party democracy in our political parties is a black mark on our democracy. Yes. You know, I, I'll just say to you, I'll just say to you that it leads to such an intellectually inert atmosphere and it encourages such a despicable kind of psychophancy yes, that we should be ashamed of it. Yes. It's time for us to interrogate it. Democracy ke naam par mujhe ghalib ki sher yaad a rahi hai. Culture minister. Baat par vaan zubaan kattti hai. Baat par vaan zubaan kattti hai. Wo kahe aur suna kare koi. I'm going to take one last lot of questions so the gentleman, I can hear and I can see relax. One here, uh, one there, and one with the red gen gentleman with the red picture. Your, what was your question? What is the basic need for democracy in India? I'm going to ask them to answer that in their two minute concluding statements immediately after this. क्या बहुदलीय व्यवस्था लोकतंत्र को मजबूत बनाती है यदि हाँ तो गठबंधन का हवाला देकर सरकारें जवाबदेह होने से क्यों डरती है क्या क्या सवाल है फिर से बोलो फिर से बताइए क्या पूछा हेलो सॉरी फिर से बताइए बहुदली पाली बिनोर जोशी सर से मेरा सवाल है सवाल एक बार फिर है क्या बहुदलीय व्यवस्था लो so, why are the people who are concerned about the government? Joshi Ji, one minute. My question is, Mr. Mulli Manoj Joshi Ji. You said that in our education, we have to throw small things in our education, we have to throw small things in our education, we have to throw small things in our education. Today, as we are seeing, in our education, only our नागरिकों को सिटीजन्स को सिर्फ ये एक चैप्टर डाल दिया जाएगा उसके थाने में चार पांच राइट्स क्या हैं अरविंद केजरीवाल वहाँ दिल्ली में सड़क पर बैठे हुए हैं इतनी ठंड में सिर्फ ये लोगों को बताने के लिए कि काजमी का किसका रेप होता है या किसी को जला दी जाती है या पुलिस एक्शन नहीं लेती इसके लिए इतना कुछ करना पड़ता है और मुझे दुष्यंत कुमार का पवन जी सुनेंगे इसे दुष्यंत कुमार का एक शेर याद आता है उस गली से इस अंग्रेजी तक धुआं तो आने दो जब सड़क खिलते नहीं है कोई नहीं सिर्फ देंगे धुआं Thank you. One last question. Keep it as a question, please, in brief. Question for Sajia. You are the only who is wearing cap. So, you are the only one who is wearing cap. The other question is this. The other question is this. I am also a man. I also need the whole freedom. क्या उसके लिए मुझे कैप जरूरी है या उसके बिना ये संभव? Thank you, शाजिया, आ जोशी जी, शाजिया, 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 hold on, please answer these questions in your two minute inter interaction right now. I'm going to again start with Indrajit Hazra to to wind it up. Indrajit. I thought that uh, Mulliji is also wearing a cap. But I think, uh, see, de democracy is not like a khichri made for, ser uh, for serving all the time. It's always in transition depending upon what the situation is. I think we're coming from a situation where we had this sort of very static kind of relationship, a sort of Maibap relationship where, you know, the people who were ruling and the word ruling was really ruling, uh, sort of gave out this sort of message and a lot of people, most people, including people who voted, were taking it without any question or sort of without sort of, I think there is also the other end of the spectrum, which I think we have to sort of question, we have to sort of analyze, we have to figure it out, which is how do you make a difference between a democratic voices and the lynch mob? Um, you see a lot of that in television, for instance, I mean, where you have sort of instant justice. The, I mean, there is a difference between giving everybody a voice 
and having everybody speak at the same time and nobody listening to anything that they're saying. So there is a difference between uh, how one listens to voices and listens to a noise and the lynch mob and the sort of a sort of democratic uh, sort of principle as it were. I just want to still give a sort of big thumbs up because democracy is a sort of a Buddhism-like middle path. Um, it'll never sort of be an all-enveloping best system that could be possible for a, for, a particular syst uh, for a particular situation. But more importantly, it will also never come up with the worst. I think, you know, it, it, more than sort of coming up with the best, it keeps us protected from the worst. And I think we have seen that in our history, where we have sort of <laughs> kept it sort of uh, unprotected and things have happened. Um, that's pretty much what I had to say, thanks. Can you hear me? Um, just really two quick points in, in, in summary from me. Um, the first is that, um, which you've already touched upon a bit, is that the greatest foundation of democracy, um, the thing without which democracy really doesn't have a chance of surviving, is freedom of expression. It's the right from which all other rights flow. And it, you, have to, you have to ensure that there's a wide variety of media, both in newspapers and in radio and television, that you do get a diversity of voices, including minority ones. And that, most importantly, that you have an active media that holds your leaders accountable, that looks for corruption, that holds the mirror up to them and makes sure that they do what they say they'll do and, and exposes dishonesty wherever you see it. Without that kind of constant house cleaning by an active, energetic media, democracy soon languishes. The second thing I want to say is that only when important the survival of Indian democracy is to the rest of the world, that you are the biggest democracy in the world and that we look to you as that and that the success of your democratic future is important, so important to democracy as, as, an, as a political theory and as a political reality. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, I just want to sum up by saying that do not be taken in by the label of democracy. Examine and re-examine the content of democracy. Democracy gives us empowerment. It has given to the downtrodden empowerment. They have learned to take from the ballot box what the system will not yield. It has given personal freedom. And democracy to be truly true must in be inclusive and must be tolerant. If democracy has to succeed, judge it not by the immediate seduction that could be offered in its name, but judge it by its long-term content because there lies the good of the nation. And I want to say in this process, we, the educated, have to interrogate every claimant. We have to interrogate every leader because ultimately, in that interrogation is the only guarantee that you will ensure not merely the label of democracy, but true democracy. And therefore, I will again, I will say, tu idhar udhar ki na baat kar. Tu idhar udhar ki na baat kar. Tu bata ki kafil hai kiyon lute. Mujhe rehzano se garaz nahi. Dakuon se koi garaz nahi hai. Teri rehbari ka sawal hai. Your leadership. Pavan ji ne bilkul thik baat kahi hai. Or mein samajhta hoon ki itne asardar dhang se unho ne kuch baat rakhi hai ki jo sabko maan ne honi chahiye. Democracy ka mere mat mein hamesha se ek पक्ष रहा है कि डेमोक्रेसी अकाउंटेबल सिस्टम है आप उसे इंटरोगेशन कहिए कुछ कहिए लेकिन अकाउंटेबल मैं आपके लिए जवाब दे हूं आप मेरे लिए जवाब दे ऐसा नहीं है कि सिर्फ मैं यूं आपके लिए जवाब दे 
आप भी मेरे लिए जवाब दें तो ये जवाबदेही जो है ये जो बच्चे ने सवाल पूछा था कि डेमोक्रेसी के लिए बेसिक नीड क्या बेसिक नीड हिंदुस्तान में क्या है वो ये ये बच्चे तुम हमसे सवाल कर सको अपने सिस्टम से सवाल कर सको कि बताओ ये क्यों हो रहा है ये आजादी तुम्हें डेमोक्रेसी देती है इसलिए इसकी जरूरत है ये पूछ सकते हो कि मेरे और मेरी उम्र के लोगों के लिए आपने क्या दिया है क्या बनाया है किधर ले जा रहे हो ये सवाल पूछने का हक आपको डेमोक्रेसी देती है इसलिए इसलिए इसकी जरूरत है और डेमोक्रेसी सिर्फ बुजुर्गों के लिए नहीं है असली डेमोक्रेसी तो आने वाली पीढ़ी के लिए है जिसे एक नया समाज बनाना है उसको डेमोक्रेट होना हम में एरिस्टोक्रेसी हो सकती है ब्यूरोक्रेसी हो सकती है क्रिप्टोक्रेसी हो सकती है कुछ भी क्रेसी हो सकती है हिपोक्रेसी हो सकती है मगर तुम में डेमोक्रेसी हो और डेमोक्रेसी को मजबूत करो इसके लिए डेमोक्रेसी की जरूरत है तुम्हारे लिए जरूरत है आने वाले हिंदुस्तान के लिए जरूरत है और डेमोक्रेसी की जो करेक्टरिस्टिक्स इन्होंने बताई हैं उनको मुझे दोहराने की जरूरत नहीं है मैं फिर कहता हूं कि लेट अस सेलिब्रेट डेमोक्रेसी द इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ ह्यूमन माइंड मन के मन मनुष्य के मस्तिष्क की स्वाधीनता इसका उत्सव मनाइए यह है डेमोक्रेसी और वो तभी हो सकती है जब आप खुले दिमाग से खुले चिंतन से सोचें और ये सोचें कि जो कुछ दूसरा कह रहा है उसमें भी वजन है जो वो कह रहा है वो भी एक हकीकत है सच का एक हिस्सा वो भी है ये सोचेंगे तो डेमोक्रेसी मजबूत होगी धन्यवाद मीर सखी मीर का एक शेर है है मेरे है मेरे शेर गो खवास पसंद लेकिन मेरी गुफ्तगु आवाम से है तो मैं आपसे कहना ये चाहूंगी मुझे भी सफेद टोपी पहनने का उतना अधिकार है जितना कि आपको काली जैकेट और जब तक आम आदमी आम इंसान खास महसूस ना करे और खास आदमी को आम महसूस ना कराया जाए हम सच्ची राजनीति पर नहीं पहुंच सकते तो ये दीवाने आम और दीवाने खास की बात नहीं है ये उस बरा ये जो असमानता है इस इसमें बराबरी लाने की लड़ाई है यही डेमोक्रेसी का पूरा की पूरा मकसद है और जाते जाते दुष्यंत कुमार की कविता सिर्फ हंगामा खड़ा करना मेरा मकसद नहीं मेरी कोशिश है ये कि तस्वीर बदलनी चाहिए मेरे सीने में नहीं तो तेरे सीने में सही हो कहीं भी आग लेकिन आग जलनी चाहिए ओके शेर Democracy contributes towards empowerment of people. Democracy contributes towards positive change and transformation. I think there is no contention about that, and I think uh, democracy also gives us the democratic rights and opportunities. But how many of us take our responsibility seriously? Because with democracy, it's not only the rights, but it's also the responsibility. Responsibility for positive change in our society. Responsibility for positive transformation in our country, and I think this is something that uh, I've seen in most countries, in most societies. The educated lot shy away from politics because politics is conceived with a lot of negative connotations. But as Gandhi ji has pointed out, if you want to see change, you have to be part of change. And I hope it's through your participation. I hope the educated elite who are here to tonight would consider that it's it's through your participation that you can be part of the change that you would like to see in India. What we saw here this evening, the questions from the audience, this is one of the most splendid aspects of democracy. The right the the right and the ability to freely ask bold questions and to ask it of your eminent leaders you know you can be 10 feet away from them and a spirited young man can stand up and say what is this what is that there are countries in the world where you can't do that and i'll come back to my old example uh, in 
China, you know, we're so dazzled by their GDP growth, we're told to be dazzled. If every time that was cited to us, if we also looked at the Freedom House ranking, where India ranks as a fully free country, even my own country is struggling to get to that level. We are partially free. China ranks with Sudan and Syria, just above North Korea and Equatorial Guinea. In Bangladesh, in 2006, we were facing political impasse, and the people actually welcomed an emergency that took place. They were so frustrated with the democracy. What followed was arrests, curbing of rights, and within nine months, we have riots. I feel immensely proud as a Bengali that it took us 15 years to get disenchanted with democracy and only nine months with non-democracy. <laughs> what followed a year later was elections, and this year, again, we faced a similar impasse, but this time, the ruling party hung on, and the army, too, very, in a disciplined way, stayed in their place. What we have now, right after elections, is an end to the violence. The opposition, which has been uh, accused of uh, being responsible for a lot of the violence, has publicly said no more violent protests. And the ruling party has started releasing the opposition's leaders. This is a reopening of political space and process. The democratic process is a dynamic one. It is not some settled static condition. It is not something that is given once and then it takes care of itself. It is something in which we are all responsible. We are all actors. Autocrats pretend to be Democrats. Democrats never do. That's why it's the best system. Thanks. So it's, so it's that time when I need to ask the House to vote, but this time not just by putting up your hand, but by saying yes. Democracy is the worst form of government except for all the rest. Do we believe, does the House believe in democracy? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Are you 100% sure? Yes. I see many people there being silent. Are you all sure? Yes. That doesn't seem to be very, very... Does everybody believe in democracy? Yes. Will you fight for it? On behalf of Namita, William, and myself, and my colleagues Shuli and Ankur, let me re restate very clearly here that the Jaipur Literature Festival will always stand for democracy, will always stand for freedom of speech. Before this festival started, we were told, do you know how many cases you have against you? And I nodded. They said, do you know how many non bailable warrants you have against you? So I nodded. And again, I said, we will not be bullied. We stand here for freedom. We stand here to ensure that each person who comes to this festival, author or visitor, continues to have them freedom of speech, irrespective of what happens to each one of us. With your help, we'll maintain that year after year. May I invite Namita, William, Ankur, Shuli on board. This has been an incredible five days. I think it's been incredible for all of you. On behalf of them, I'd first like to thank each and every person here who's come, traveled across the world, or even come from their next door somewhere in Jaipur. Jaipur has embraced us. Once again, they've shown it is the best city for this festival. Thank you very much, Jaipur. <laughs>